Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Sony a6300. Now, those of you familiar with this camera already know it's one of the best values on the market if you're looking for a high-quality mirrorless interchangeable lens camera with an APS-C sensor. It does not have the five-axis image stabilization that its more expensive sibling, the A6500, has, but it pretty much does have just about everything else and at a lower price. And I've already covered it, reviewed it. It is a favorite of mine, especially if you're looking to travel light. And if budget is your primary focus, the A6300 is where it's at. If you can spend a little more, I've said it in the past, then get the A6500. Uh, but all those things aside, today's video is all about the firmware update that Sony pushed to basically the entire current crop of interchangeable lens cameras in their lineup. Uh, and for this camera, I think it's really one of the best firmware updates because not only does it address the threshold for overheating, which was already addressed in the past, uh, but it addresses other things as well. But I mentioned the overheating uh, update being addressed because the A6300 seems to have been one of the, I would say, the biggest recipients of a true upgrade in that its threshold seems to have um, been pushed beyond what we've seen with the A9, the A7R Mark II, and the A6500. Uh, so overall, the latest firmware update, uh, which I will include a link in the description, you just have to make sure your camera is in mass storage mode uh, under the settings for USB connectivity, uh, and then follow the on-screen instructions once you open the EXE file that you've downloaded uh, directly from the Sony website. My link will be to the US website, of course, if you're outside of the US you should be looking at a different, you know, the website that corresponds with the country that you reside in. Uh, in terms of what that relatively quick firmware update will do, uh, of course, it will add support for the new uh, 100 to 400 GM lens that I should be getting uh, towards the end of July. It will also add the auto power off temp function, which uh, was introduced on the A9 and now has been added to basically all of the cameras that uh, this giant firmware push uh, has addressed. It will also modify the aspect of the guide frame display in the LCD. So that's something interesting that we haven't seen done uh, for the other cameras and that's because uh, the A6300 simply didn't have that capability. Uh, of course it, w it would, should, uh, improve the overall stability of the performance of the camera and most importantly as I mentioned at the top of the video this is going to increase that overheat threshold uh, in a major way. I've seen tests already done where we're seeing a literal double in video record time without overheating. People are going from in the 20 you know, to 30 minute range to well over an hour. So uh, I've done limited testing. I'm not going to tell you that it absolutely doubles uh, the overheat uh, threshold, but it appears based on at least early feedback, uh, since this update did just come out uh, yesterday, uh, that the A6300 is the biggest, um, again, uh, recipient of a benefit with that heat threshold push. And for those of you wondering, well, will this damage my camera? Again, Sony is pushing out this firmware update uh, with no intent of damaging your hardware. That would not be in their best interest or yours. Uh, this is really aimed solely at improving the performance of the camera. So in my opinion, this just makes the A6300 an even more compelling option for those of you out there in the market. Uh, again, for one of the best performing, most compact interchangeable lens cameras that can really do just about everything. The only thing missing is again that uh, five axis image stabilization, which has now become pretty much the standard uh, going forward for every camera that Sony has released uh, pretty much after uh, the A6300 when it comes to interchangeable lens cameras like the A6500 and of course the brand new A9. But that rounds things out. A uh, very solid firmware update for what was already a great camera that had already received uh, firmware updates to address uh, overheating uh, much like every Sony camera. You know, Sony does listen to consumers. That's part of the reason that I 
am a fan. It's not just because they push the envelope uh, basically for the entire digital imaging industry. It's because they also listen to consumer feedback and address problems. And I don't know how much more quickly they could have acted uh, once they heard the feedback about the A9 overheating. And v- kudos to them. Very smart of Sony to decide, hey, let's not just address the A9. Let's address every camera that's in our current crop that we've released in the last year plus. Uh, of course, they've also made it clear they're not su- going to support um, cameras like the A7 uh, and the A7R. The, these firmware updates did not address those older models. Even though they are still for sale, Sony clearly drawing a line as to how far their support is really going to reach. And that also is a signal in terms of uh, what their firmware updates can address in terms of the internal hardware Uh, I think it's not just them trying to marginalize older products. I think it's also a matter of what is actually inside uh, the newer hardware. But that pretty much rounds things out. The A6300 went from being great to even better. Uh, And boy, do I remember the controversy over the overheating with the A6300. Like many Sony cameras, um, since this was a 4K beast when it came out, but limited by the overheating now, overheating kind of a zero issue based on early reports. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.